Okay, so the title of this video is Should You Have an Adjustable Gas Block on Your AR-15? And the answer is it really depends. I'm going to go over some personal experiences with this rifle. This is my Polymer 80 build. I have a Cyrac Ordnance Adjustable Gas Block. It's a, it's a mid-length gas system and uh, we won't get down into the components. I've already done that. But for those of you who don't know, real quick, the Cyrac Ordnance Adjustable Gas Block is just a way to turn a screw with a detent clockwise and close off the amount of gas that comes out of the barrel into the gas port down the gas tube and into the gas key of the bolt carrier group so the purpose of the, of the adjustable gas is to adjust how hard the bolt carrier group you know recoils uh, back down the buffer tube of your weapon it'll mitigate recoil It'll, uh, it'll just make the overall shooting experience of your weapon better. And if I put this gun up next to my Diamondback DB-15, and for those of you that, that watch my channel, you've, I have that video up too. I love that rifle. But there's no comparisons in recoil with this rifle and my Diamondback DB-15. And I should also mention I have a Rainier Arms muzzle brake and compensator as well on this with the gas turned down and shooting the, uh, the, the bulk uh, federal ammo in the 100 round boxes that you can get from Walmart. Let me talk about kind of some experiences. When I first put the gas block on, I thought, you know, maybe I did something wrong. I thought I had a faulty gas block because I almost had to run full gas just to get the gun to cycle. And it stands to reason that it would, should be that way because none of this had been broken in. It was a brand new build with all brand new components so I'm talking you know the wear points on the bolt carrier group and, the, and, and, and all of the sliding moving components that needed a break-in period you know to, to polish up the components remove some of the paint anodizing whatever need to be need to be done so I found myself turning down the gas I kept turning it down and turning it down and uh, what will happen you, you, if you get this adjusted just perfectly fine for whatever ammo you're shooting say it's so you turn it down so far and then you pull the trigger on the last round and it won't lock the bolt back. Okay, well you're not having enough gas. There's not enough gas going down pushing the bolt carrier group back into the buffer tube, allowing it to catch on the on the uh on the uh the mag follower. Okay. Or the uh, the bolt catch, whatever you want to call it. So if you have that ammo and you have it specifically set up for that ammo and it works fine and it works like you want and you kinda of get that thud at the end of that last round because there's just barely enough gas to catch the bolt carrier. It's going to be shooting sweet. It's going to work fine. It's going to run. I mean, you guys need to need to need to see for yourself. It's pretty amazing how how flat you can make these guns shoot. And I'm going to at the end of this video, I'm going to show some side shots comparisons between the Diamondback DB15 and this. And uh, I'm not sure how well it'll come through uh, viewing the differences in recoil, but they're not even similar. This is so much more flat shooting and so much easier shooting. Now, having said that. Once this rifle gets dirty, it's going to stop locking the bolt back because there's going to be corrosion and everything. The, 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 it's going to start building up, and then it's going to quit. All this, you know, the, the, the crystallizations or whatever, carbonizing the bolt. And if anyone's ever seen the bolt inside the bolt carrier group, they get absolutely filthy. So all of that will take a toll. I don't know how many rounds I could get through this on this particular guy. So I keep this gun, I keep this rifle uh, immaculately clean. But having said that, I don't know how many rounds I could put through before it would start to fail, and it will fail. It'll fail so much sooner than a rifle that is on full gas. And here's another thing to mention. If you use different ammo, if you use, say, a lower quality ammo or a remand ammo that has maybe not as, quite, not as high pressure, it may not lock your bolt back ever, even on a clean weapon. So it's going to be, when you do this, you adjust it just like you want, it's going to be specific to one type of ammo, or at least an ammo like that, or an ammo with, you know, better ammo, higher, a little bit higher pressures. So, should you put a, an, an adjustable gas block in AR-15? You know, it's going to be up to you. If you want this weapon to be your home personal defense, I would say absolutely do not use an adjustable gas block. Use a muzzle brake. But I mean, there you go. You're firing an AR-15 indoors and you've put a muzzle brake on it and now you've made it louder than it already was. So, I don't know. That's too, you know, for me, you would need a subsonic weapon with a with a suppressor to fire indoors, like a, a nightstand Glock, you know, or something with a uh, with, with a suppressor 
45 ACP. But anyway, uh, if you want to save your life with one of these weapons, just run full gas in my opinion. And there's nothing that says that I can't just turn this gas back up. All I have to do is just uh, unscrew the set screw, the detent in the front of the Cyrex ordnance block and just uh, just turn it back into a full gas gun. That's, that's, that's easy to do. It just needs an Allen, Allen wrench. But those are some of the things I wanted to point out. I really like it. And like I said, uh, I'll show some, show some side shots of this in the comparison to the DB-15 down the back. And I'll do that right now. And thanks for watching, everyone. And I hope this kind of clears up some information. That you know, this was, I haven't really seen any anybody really talk about adjustable gla gas blocks to this extent, and I didn't really know until I'd personally experienced it what was going to happen when I uh, when I put one on. But yeah, after after you you put it on and you get your gun dirty, is your gun's going to fail. So uh, for me, you know, the difference was awesome. There was a huge difference, but. You know, like I said, it's not a true comparison because I do have a, a muzzle compensator on this as well. So there you go. Thanks for watching.